Hi, I'm Scott Simpson, and today we're going to be talking about the variable equation of state and compression factor. Before we get there, though, we have to cover Taylor series, um, and you'll see eventually why we need to discuss this mathematical process of a Taylor series. So you've probably discussed Taylor series uh, in your calculus course. It's usually covered, I think, in Calc 2, uh, but it's a representation of a function. function as an infinite sum. Calculated from the derivatives of that function at a single point. Derivatives as an infinite sum calculated from derivatives single point. So for example, if we have a function f of x, we're going to say we'll calculate it at one individual point, at point a. So therefore, uh, if we have f of x, what we're calculating at about point a, we would first have a function at a plus the first derivative of a 1 factorial x minus a plus the second derivative of that function at a over 2 factorial uh, times x minus a squared plus f triple prime or the, the third derivative at a 3 factorial x minus a cubed, and so on. And this could be represented a bit differently. It could be represented as a Riemann sum, where we start at our index n is equal to 0. We go to infinity f oops, of n. So that's the derivative of which we're taking. So depending on how far we go out in terms of our series, how many derivatives we're taking, over all, all over n factorial, x minus a to the n. Okay, so we could stretch out um, this value, this function. Uh, at some point, we do have to eventually truncate, which we will see when it comes to um, our next equation of state and compression factors. Other examples uh, we've seen, uh, you've probably seen some of these other series before. And they end up being quite useful, not only in thermodynamics, but eventually when we just start discussing quantum mechanics, these pop up from time to time. So other examples. We could represent 1 over 1 minus x as the following series. Uh, we have 1 plus x plus x squared plus x to the third, and so on. And that would be equivalent to summation n is equal to zero as we go to infinity x to the n. What about if we were looking at a function like e to the x? In that case, we have one plus, take the Take a look at this guy, uh, x plus x squared, or 2 factorial, plus x to the third, 3 factorial, and so on. How could we best represent that as a sum? Let's look at that. n is equal to 0. So inspecting that, what you will see, um, it's almost the same thing. We have x to the n over n factorial. So there are a bunch of these that you can find and you can use. Uh, we're going to use one of these uh, once it comes to compression factor. So speaking of compression factor, let's start to discuss that. So compression factor is very useful to actually describe real gases as opposed to our ideal gas situation. So compression factor, and it's given the symbol Z often. 
compression fan. Z. So we can manipulate the ideal gas equation to find the molar volume of a gas. So um, molar volume is sometimes given the symbol V sum M. Uh, and well, all it is is it's the volume of your gas divided by the moles of your gas. If we're considering the ideal gas equation, then the remainder of the side would be RT over P. Okay, so for one mole of ideal gas at STP, standard temperature and pressure, what STP is, we have one atmosphere and we're talking at 273.15 Kelvin. So we're at zero degrees C. Uh, that B sub M, that's going to be equal to 22.4 meters. In this case, we denote a row up here. That means we're under ideal conditions. We'll see why this is important in a second. Now, this idea of compression factor, what compression factor is, is it's looking at how ideal is our gas um, under certain conditions. The, the more you deviate from ideality, the more different your compression factor is going to be. So let's talk about that compression factor. The compression factor Z. It's a ratio of molar volume. So we're going to compare our actual molar volume to what ideally our molar volume would be. So a ratio of the molar volume of gas V sub M compared to a perfect gas in that case we again denote that with V sub M not. Okay, so basically what we're saying, let's turn this language jumbo into some mathematical equations. We've got V sub M over V sub M naught. Okay, how do we get other parameters in here? Let's look at that. Because we want to discuss temperature pressure, we have these molar volumes and we have that Z, that compression factor. So we originally said Z is equal to Vm over Vm naught from the ideal gas law. We know that PV is equal to nRT. In this case, we want to get to a molar volume. We're going to move that N over so we get PVn. RT, that's a molar volume, so we end up with PVM over RT. And now remember, we're talking about an ideal gas in this case, so this VM should be a VM naught. We manipulate this around, we get VM naught is equal to RT over P. Now, let's take this equation, let's sub it into here, and let's see what we get. So in that case, we get Z is equal to VM over RT. T over P. Since this is in the denominator, it's going to flip up. We get Z is equal to VM times P over RT. Let's manipulate everything all over to one side. So we end up with VM P RT times Z. Okay. So that's going to be a useful equation that we can use. If we know our compression factor at this given temperature and pressure, then we should be able to figure out our molar volume pretty quick, or any of these parameters, as long as we have a couple of them. Okay, but um, how, do, how do we get this? Can we delve, delve deeper into that compression factor? Uh, Z can actually be expressed as a Taylor series. So a compression factor can be expressed as a Taylor series. Oh, Taylor. And we 
we can keep either in mind pressure or we can consider molar volume. Uh, they have two different forms. PVM would be equal to RT. And as we previously discussed in this lecture, we could express this as a series. So we'll do 1 plus B e at some given temperature. The temperature is important. These coefficients change as that temperature changes all over Vm plus, we're going to call this one C, the next constant, at some temperature T, Vm squared plus, and this continues on for infinity. Now, um, generally, uh, most people look at that, this is known as the, um, the first virial coefficient, this one's known as the second virial coefficient, this is the virial coefficient, or excuse me, virial um, equation of state where depending on um, your temperature and the uh, identity of your gas, these constants will change. Now most of the time people don't go beyond even B uh, because as we start increasing, as we go this way um, through the series, that Vm is squared or it goes up by a different power, meaning that this value becomes incredibly small and influences our other parameters very little. Um, it can also be expressed not only in terms of molar volume, but also in terms of pressure, in which case these constants are different. We're going to denote them with a prime. So we'd have 1 plus B prime times P plus uh, C prime P squared, and so on. And an important point is, is uh, the temperature is very important in this case. These constants depend on the temperature. So they will change with corresponding temperature. So again, uh, B would be considered the, the first variable coefficient. And C is considered the second. So let's use some of these in the problem. We'll ask some questions too along the way. Okay. So we always want to take things back to an ideal gas. As we'll see, it makes our lives easier to always assume an ideal gas. Uh, but we need to know when we can, when can we assume something's an ideal gas? How do, how do these equations change? get back to the ideal gas law. So question, what are the variable coefficients for an ideal gas? So if we consider that, what do we know? We know that it should be one. Sorry about that, someone was drilling underneath me, so the noise I thought was kind of irritating. So let's uh, get back to this question. So those coefficients, if we consider that virial equation of state again, um, we have P, Vm is equal to RT, 1 plus B, Vm plus C, Vm squared plus D, da, da, da. But if those coefficients are 1, and we sum up all of these things, uh, what will end up happening is, is we'll arrive back at the ideal um, gas equation. So we end up with PVM is equal to RT, assuming that this is really small. Okay. Uh, so, another question then. Let's say... Uh, we, we have a system, and we want to calculate the compressibility factor. So question, what is the compressibility factor For 
a sample. Carbon dioxide with a VM, a molar volume, 0 0.366 decimeters cubed per mole. Oh, we forgot our conditions. We have to say what temperature and we have to say at what pressure at 500K and 100 bar. So we have our equation P Vm is equal to RT times Z. We're looking for that compressibility factor, so let's manipulate this around. Z is equal to Pm, P times Vm divided by RT. So what we have to do is look, plug in these values, solve. We have to look up the correct ideal gas constant. If you notice online, there are a bunch of different ideal gas constants you can go with. Uh, you want to make sure your units work out. So we have 100 bar, we have a molar volume that's given to us right there, 0 0.366 decimeters cubed per mole, divided by temperature we have was 500K. We need this to work out. There are no units in terms of compressibility factors, so whatever we select for our R has to balance all these other units out. If you look it up, you can find 8.314 decimeters cubed times bar Kelvin mole. So if we look at that, all of our units should cancel out in the end. Uh, you multiply it through, what we find is, is we get 0 0.880. Okay, now let's look at this number. We do have a number that expresses that it's different from ideality. But we want to know about the repul if the forces between the gas particles are repulsive or attractive. We can learn that from this number. So, does this calculated Z indicate a repulsion or attraction? Remember, Z is equal to Vm over Vm naught. So the, I, the actual versus the ideal situation. In our case, our Vm, our actual volume, is smaller than the ideal situation. That means that um, we have a smaller amount of volume. That means the gas particles are attracting one another. They're sucking each other in, taking up less space that way. So, the Vm that we have, the molar volume, is smaller than the idealized molar volume. That means we have an attraction. Attraction between gas particles. So hopefully with that you understand uh, where this variable equation of state comes from, how to model real gases, and what is meant by that compressibility factor. It's an important topic. It comes up um, whenever you're trying to model uh, a real gas, and chances are when it comes to PCHEM lab, you're going to have some way, shape, or form compressibility factor is going to be incorporated in there. All right, if you have any questions, please leave comments below. Have a good day.